Hi, good afternoon. This is Jenny Lyles and this is Out of My Mind. I'm going to talk today about parenting, executive function, and your child's messy room. Um, we've gone over executive function three previous times. We defined it in part one. We dealt with how to manage problems with executive function in ourselves in part two. In part three, we learned the relationship between executive function and habit formation. And today I'm going to talk a little bit both about developing better executive function as a child and helping your child develop executive function. Now, I want to point out this particular little postcard that I'm working on today has uh, synesthesia written right into it. It says, and it's a little hard to see before I start coloring, but it says, breathe in nature's colors, see its fragrance. And a synesthesia is when your mind sees uh, fragrances or sounds or hears colors and things like that. So this is actually enshrining a bit of mental health lore. And I had nothing to do with that. It was just the next postcard in my session. Anyway, I've decided to do this one in pretty sunset colors. I might add some purples. Um, in fact, I think I probably will. I'll add a couple purples to this list. And I'm looking for one as we speak. And, oh, that's a pretty one. And I'm going to talk a little bit again about the f eight areas of executive function. Well, before I do that, I'm going to slide this across your p point of view. Uh, here is my notes for today. Feel free to pause and capture all this stuff or not as it suits you. The eight sections again are working memory. They are flexible thinking, impulse control, self-monitoring, and uh, social cues, emotional control, task initiation and self-motivation, organization, planning, prioritization, and time management. Now, as you think through some of those, you'll probably figure out a lot of different ways some of these things are going to apply to a child cleaning a room. Let's suppose that you have an eight-year-old child that has had some difficulties in his or her life. And I'll just use there from now on for simplicity because they is a perfectly good first-person pronoun. It comes from the old French, and we're going to go ahead and go with it. Um... Your child's room is a mess. Let's talk first about what our first instinct is to do. Our first instinct is to yell, to punish, to d ignore it because it's more than we want to handle, to being consistent. Some days we might uh, really try hard. Other days we may just say, nope, we're not going to worry about this, right? Um, grounding. Telling the child, you're going to get this clean all at once. This is an eight-year-old child. Um, by definition, an eight-year-old child does not have fully developed executive function. So I'm going to tell you right now that those eight things that we talked about a little bit ago are going to affect this child's ability to do what you're asking him or her to do, them to do. Um, what some of the things that are effective are, are consistent boundaries supervision while the child is learning and this will start constant when you are teaching a child a new skill you are going to supervise them pretty much constantly and I know that sucks and that's too bad that's part of your job as a parent and that matter that's whether you are blood to this child or not um, calm redirection uh, Help breaking tasks into smaller pieces. Regular timed work and break cycles. External rewards. Catching your child being good. Catching them improving in the task. Um, modeling the behavior you want. And that all sounds like a whole lot of psychological mumble jumbo. So let me uh, give you an example. You have got a child, their room is a disaster. There are dirty clothes and clean clothes all over the floor. 
The toys are all over the place. Half of them are broken and really need to be thrown away. There's probably some foodstuffs hidden in your bedroom that you did not give them permission to use, but they did anyway. Uh, it's all this ringing a bell. Uh, you have an unmade bed. You have paper trash all over, maybe some old homework assignments, maybe some coloring pages. You probably have a crushed crayon or two in there. You have a trash can in there, but it's empty. You have a hamper in there, but it's empty. And you're done. Well, this is what you need to do. On a day that you have off and your child does not have school, it is going to be cleaning day. And you are going to prepare for this in a couple of different ways you are going to first of all make sure that you have something portable that you can keep yourself busy with um, that could be a tablet that could be a phone that could be a book you're reading that could be a piece of crafting that can go with you like knitting or crochet that could be you sitting there with a clipboard and some magic markers and a card like this one coloring okay now you're going to walk up to your child and you're not going to ground them. You're not going to yell at them. You're going to so guess what? We're going to get your room clean today. And this is how we're going to do it. <clears throat> we're going to start here in about a half hour. Come on, come with me. And you sound inviting. You sound like this is going to be something interesting and if not fun, at least not horrible. Okay? So you want to sound inviting. And you say, I'm going to go in your room with you. And I'm going to plant myself on your bed for right now. I'll move if you need me to, but for right now, I'm going to be on your bed. And guys, if your child's bed is a hot, hot mess, you might want a towel. Um, and I'm going to sit here and I'm going to help you clean, but I'm going to help you clean by directing you to do it rather than doing the work myself. But I'm going to be here if you get stuck and we're going to see. And you walk in there and if you've got a camera or a phone, that's great. You walk in there and the first thing you do is, first of all, we're going to see where we start. Let's go ahead and take a couple pictures of how bad the room is right now. And your child may complain and you say, you know, it's okay. Nobody's getting in trouble. I'm just going to show you how much you've done when we finished all this. Okay. And remember, stay calm, stay relaxed. Stay easy going. This is an education se session, not a discipline session. The consequence for having a messy room should be as simple as you have to clean it. And that doesn't mean you have to clean it while being yelled at. It doesn't mean you have to clean it or all these other things happen. You just have to clean it. So um, for a child under 10 or 12, you can usually get this to happen with just a little bit of convincing. Sometimes you might have to bribe a little, especially as they get older, and some kids are going to be much more stubborn. You may have to do some prep work with those kids. We'll talk about that another day. So you've got this child in the room with you. You've taken a picture of the mess. You've settled down onto their bed, and you've got a book or you've got something that you're fiddling with. And you look at them and say, okay, I've looked around the room. Do you want to start with your dirty laundry or would you rather start with your paper trash? Let your child have a decision, but limit the decision to one or two things that you've decided on. And the reason for that is because you don't want to overwhelm your child, not because you want to take choice away from your child. So if your child says, well, I don't want to start with either of those. I want to start with my books. You just look at them and say, okay, because this isn't about obedience. This is about helping your child have the skills to organize their time, to control their impulses to do the things they need to do to be able to make their room a livable place okay so they've started on that and you look at them and say great I tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to set this egg timer or my phone or whatever I'm going to set it for about 15 minutes does that sound about right let's see how much you can get done in 15 minutes and you let the child work for 15 minutes if they have any questions go ahead and answer them um, if they get stuck and you see that they slowed down or stopped, you can just kind of gently say, hey, I thought you were working for 15 minutes. Can you get going again? Here's something you can pick up right over here. You can point to something that they missed. 
when that timer goes off, and it might be fun to set it for a really fun ringtone, just for the heck of it, but when that timer goes off, you look at them and say, you know what, that's a really good start, and I don't care if they only picked up two things in that 15 minutes. You tell them that is a great start. I really like what you did here, and we still have a lot to do, but let's take a picture right now, and then you get 15 minutes break, okay? So you give that child 15 minutes or so to do whatever they want. Now your child is going to test you. I can guarantee it because this is new behavior from you and they want to see how real it is. So they're going to try to make you yell. They're going to try to frustrate you. They're going to try to make this about you and not about them and not about their room. And so they're going to try to distract you. You just go back to reading your book or coloring or uh, working on your craft or playing on your phone or whatever it was you were doing and you let them have their 15 minutes and at the end of their 15 minutes if they were not uh, wise enough to pick a video game that can be paused you get to shut that game off in the middle of a round that they will not be happy to miss okay so you do that and then you go back to okay what's the next part you've done oh looks like you still have a little more paper trash to do and during this 15 minute time when you finish that paper trash how about you start on either your dirty laundry or if you'd like you can start working on putting your toys into the toy box okay or if they've got a collection they can put their collection away or whatever right just pick something that works in your home and so you go back to kind of sort of paying attention to your child, but mostly distracting yourself from being bored and irritable. And you let your child work and you answer their questions like, hey mom, or hey dad, or hey unk, or hey grandma, or whoever you are to this child. You go back to answering their questions as they get a little confused. And you keep encouraging them. You're doing great, great job. Words like that matter a lot, and you keep it up, and at the end of 15 minutes, you take another picture, you praise them for what they did do. After you've praised them, you say, hey, you know, there's some things that you need to work on the next time, but I, and then you go back to praise again. I really like what you did. Um, it's go ahead and take your 15 minute break. And you do this over and over. You make sure to get a break for lunch or snacks when they're needed. Um, you know, cleaning a room, it takes sustenance. You know, you're doing this because anything you do like yelling or uh, grounding is going to make their executive function worse. And here's something I want you to consider. It may be that your child's room is a mess not because they can't, won't clean their room, but because they can't. And I don't mean physically can't, I mean that they can't control their impulses, they can't control their emotions, they're having trouble starting because they don't know where to start, they're having troubles deciding what's the most important thing to do, they're having troubles with organizing their room and figuring out where things go. Those are all executive functions and executive functions are fragile. So if your child's been having problems sleeping, if they're under stress because of school, if they have ADHD or a learning disability, or there's been some tension in the house, or any of, any of so many things, I can't even count them all, those are all going to check, uh, affect your child's ability to clean. Now, theoretically, this should work in most cases, and frankly, it usually works when I use this on my boys, and both of my boys ended up pretty okay, okay? However, there are going to be times when this isn't going to work. When you start this and your child completely melts down, they can't handle the task at all. They start calling you names, they start yelling, they start throwing things. Um, it's not going to do you any good to clean the room at that point, but you're also not going to want to reward them for that behavior. You're not going to really want to punish them, but you're not going to want to reward them either. So let's say your th child is throwing a major temper tantrum. You look at them and say, you know what, how about you stay in here and relax for a little bit? You don't make it sound like a punishment. You just make it sound like an opportunity to get themselves together. But you don't offer video games. You don't offer their phone, those sorts of things. If they ask for them, they you say, you know what, for right now you're not going to have those things because I want you to kind of get yourself under control. 
how about you do something that's fairly calming and then we'll try again in 20 minutes. And sometimes in 20 minutes that'll work, sometimes it won't. Sometimes you're going to have to leave the room cleaning for a different time because your child's need might be more important than that bedroom. Sometimes it's your need for the bedroom. Sometimes you may go, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go through here and I'm going to pick up anything that is unsafe and I'm going to pick up anything that could cause a problem for my house. So you would pick up things like broken toys. You would pick up things like foodstuffs. You would clear a space from your child's front door to your child's closet. You would clear another space from their front door to their bed. These sorts of things so that your child has a safe room to be in. And then say, do you want to talk about whatever's bothering you and if whatever's bothering them is you you can say hey if it's not me you want to talk to could you talk to somebody else and we can try this again tomorrow and I don't want to stress you out so why don't you go ahead and go about your day for right now because remember we don't want to raise obedient adults obedient adults are not particularly good members of society we want our society to be led by people who lead and leaders don't necessarily obey um, although they will obey if it's the right thing to do what we want is adults who are productive who are happy and who put more into the world than they take out and that's what we want our children to learn to be so I want you to remember that their executive function their working memory their flexible thinking their impulse control their ability to self-monitor and identify social cues their emotional control, their ability to start a task and motivate themselves, their ability to organize a space and an ability to organize their time is always going to be dependent on all the different things that can affect executive function, the least of which can be a poor night's sleep or having a cold or an asthma attack all the way to ADHD, um, experiencing a trauma, perhaps one you don't know about, perhaps one you do. Um, dealing with bipolar or depression or anxiety. All of these things can affect your ability, your child's ability to clean a room. And sometimes you're going to have to put aside a clean room until you've dealt with the underlying issue that is causing problems with executive function. Because the bottom line is most people like to live in fairly clean spaces. Now, I live in a creative space, which means that I deliberately leave things out that will spark ideas, but they are all safe and they are in the place where they belong, even though they are not put away. And that is also considered a clean space for this exercise. So, as a parent, again, your goal is not to have so much an obedient child or to have a child that is a credit to you or a child that listens to everything you say or is always happy with you. You want a child who is going to be an adult who is happy, functional, and compassionate, who puts more into the world than they take out. And you do that by modeling the behavior you want. You do that by teaching them the behavior you want. You teach them by being patient, by repeating, by breaking tasks down into smaller pieces. This is pretty much it for just a messy room, but I want you to think how this might work with not so much a messy room as uh, a homework assignment that takes several days. How would you break that down? Is there a deciding what your topic phase is? Is there a phase where you're doing some research and deciding what's important and what isn't? Um, deciding where to start, writing a first draft, writing a second draft. If you help your child break that down, then they're going to do better on a project like that. Um, if you don't, they're not going to have as much ability to do that. Uh, think about it in terms of having to deal with a problem with a friend at school. You know, um, if they're able to use their executive function to think through all their options and break it down into smaller pieces and organize their time and maybe even organize their whole friendship group to get things to happen, then they're more likely to have a positive outcome when they're helping a friend with a crisis situation or their own crisis situation. 
I know a young lady who is really good at crisis situations. She told me not too long ago that she was very proud of herself because she got an adult involved in one of her friend's unsafe behaviors and then she broke down and cried and freaked out a little bit. And that is a child whose parents have worked very, very hard to help her with her executive function skills, which she has a great deal of, by the way. And when, when people do stuff like that, you want to reward them with praise. You want to reward them with time to do the things they enjoy. You want to reward them by letting them know that you appreciate who and what they are. So catch your child doing better, not perfect. Catch your child being happy and wonderful to other people. I don't have a lot more for this, so I'm going to remind you that you can always go to oomm.live for my videos, for audio clips, for links to my Patreon and to YouTube, and for short microfictions that I throw in there just for the fun of it sometime. There's also my Patreon at patreon.com backslash J-L-I-L-E-S that you can always go to if you think my work deserves a monthly treat so that I can keep doing this every month for people. Um, half of everything I earn on Patreon, as I've reminded people before, goes to my best friend Kathy Malone, who has a heart condition and is waiting to get on a transplant list and cannot get on that transplant list until she has raised $20,000 for anti-rejection meds for the first 18 months after her heart, heart transplant. And you can find more information about that on my website. And you can, as I said, half of everything I get on Patreon will go to help her. And once she has had the transplant, half of the first a thousand dollars that I have on Patreon will go to her to continue to help her to pay for her uh, medications as she is on disability and cannot earn money herself to make that happen. Uh, also, I have a YouTube and a SoundCloud, both of which are also available from the top of the right hand con column on a desktop computer from oomm.live or you can scroll down if you are on a mobile phone and it is towards the bottom after the main content of the website. Thank you very much and I will see you again later this week. This should be up by later today and I hope you like this and I hope it helps you with the problems you're having with your children. I very much appreciate it when people say, hey, this didn't work for me. How can I change what I'm doing to make it better? Because then I make better videos for you and you make better choices for the things that you're trying to do. So please comment wherever you see this video, whether it is on Patreon or my website or on YouTube and like and subscribe and share this everywhere you see so that other people who can benefit it benefit from it can find it. Thank you again. This is Jenny Lyles. I am getting ready for a net, my next therapy appointment in 10 minutes and so I will talk to you later. Thank you.